Welcome to the session on how SAP Cal Platform is the business platform for the intelligent enterprise. Um, thank you very much for joining. My name is Cecilia Wargo and I'm part of the product management team for SAP Cal Platform. Um, I'll be doing this session here in Barcelona, accompanied by my colleague um, Venu, who will be doing a demo on intelligent business process management. So what are we going to discuss today? As mentioned, we're going to discuss the intelligent enterprise and what role both the business technology platform and SAP Cal Platform play within the intelligent enterprise and how we help our, our customers actually achieve and transform into intelligent enterprises. We'll discuss the SAP Cal platform use cases, so what you can actually do with the platform, what you can use it for, and do a deep dive into intelligent business process management, um, give you the key, key building blocks um, of, that, of that use case, and also do um, a demo that will kind of show you exactly the value and what's behind intelligent business process management. So this slide just wants to give you um, kind of an overview of where you are in your, in your tech ed, let's say, learning journey. Um, two years ago, we started creating these learning journeys all for tech ed sessions to give customers um, an idea of exactly what would be included in a learning journey, what they could learn from that, and in what step they were when they were visiting each, each session. So as you can see, we're in the explore section, and this is the very first, um, very first session, so that means it's an overview session. We give you kind of overview information on everything that we cover. If you want to do a deep dive on some specific topics, like say integration or extensions, there are dedicated tech ed sessions, and I've kind of highlighted them on the slides as well, so you can have the numbers for easy reference. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so I'm sure you're familiar with this slide. You've seen it in the keynote and probably in some other presentations. Um, here we just want to kind of set the stage and tell you that we're talking about the intelligent enterprise and how we can help our customers actually go through that journey and to become the intelligent enterprise that they need to be to adapt to the digital transformation era. Um, so as you can see, in the center, we have our business technology platform with the four main pillars. And we are, what we're doing is actually combining and merging both the operational data and the experience data. So it's not important just to know the what, just to have the contextual information. It's also important to understand the why behind the what to be able to make informed decisions and take um, in actions faster. So if we kind of deep dive into the business technology platform, um, as you've already seen in the keynote as well, there are four main pillars. So you have the analytics pillar, um, and there SAP um, Analytics Cloud plays a major role, not only in just the reporting, but also in the planning aspect. Um, we also have a database and data management pillar, which is mainly about SAP HANA um, and SAP HANA Cloud Services, as well as you, as you saw in the keynote as well. And then to the right, we have the pillars where SAP Cal Platform plays the, the biggest role, let's say, intelligent technology, so that's machine learning, um, AI, IoT, and development and integration. And there we have intelligent um, BPM, we have the integration suite, we have the extent enterprise extensions, and we also have the digital experience, so the actual consumption layer for the end user. And all this is based on open standards and open source, so we provide flexible deployment options, whether it's on-premise, whether it's um, a cloud, or whether it's a hybrid landscape. Um, and we also provide foundational platform service that you can use to structure your applications and the architecture, um, and that will also help you kind of be scalable and remain, and for your applications to continue to run even if the foundation or the infrastructure level changes. So if we're talking about SAP Cal Platform specifically, as we see here, there are major, some main use cases for the platform. So the two major use cases would be integration and extensions. Um, and integration, as, as was highlighted in, highlighted in the keynote as well, is not just about integrating SAP to SAP applications. It's also about integrating SAP to non-SAP applications. And that's a major use case and where we try to help our customers be quicker, be more efficient, be faster. Again, embedding intelligent technologies to give you recommendations and try to automate the integration process as well. Um, so in terms of extensions, again, SAP Cloud Platform is used to extend existing SAP solutions. So for example, if you have SAP S4 HANA or if you have SAP Success Factors and you need a you need a modification to a business process, you need to add some custom code, SAP Cal Platform is the platform to do that on. Um, we have several different services and tools, development tools that we can um, provide to customers to kind of help them create their extension um, and deploy it on SAP Cal Platform. We'll go over the, um, the details in, in the following slides. 
Then we have, of course, data-driven insights. So again, it's all about turning that business data into business value. And how you can do that is, again, by embedding intelligent technologies, by embedding analytics, by embedding machine learning capabilities to be able to extract the needed data at the right time and provide that to the people who need it. It's not just about getting reporting somewhere. It's also about making sure that the people that need to use that data and handle that information to make a decision can have it um, available. And of course, nothing would be complete if you don't have, let's say, the UI or the user experience level. Everything that is, all the business data, all the business processes need to be visible to the end user, need to be visible and um, easily workable with, for the person that has to do a business task or complete a business process. Um, and with our digital workplace or business workplace solution, we're offering a single point of access for consumers to be able to see all the relevant business data. Of course, it could be role-based, so you would only see the data that, you have, that you're entitled to see, and also complete tasks and business process directly through this single portal, instead of having to go and access different applications to complete an end-to-end -end process. Another important aspect that platform provides is the concept of a uh, regulated or secure offering for regulated markets and industries. We understand that customers are operating on a global scale and when you need to operate, when you need to deploy an application in a different region, you need to adhere and comply with specific regulations and specific requirements. So at SAP Cloud Platform, um, we are partnering with Alibaba Cloud, for example, to provide an offering of SAP Cloud Platform in China that complies to those market regulations. But we're also partnering, for example, with IBM and Atos to provide a single tenant edition of SAP Cloud Platform that, again, will be a secure, um, secure offering that covers the data privacy or data regulations for specific ind industries. Another important aspect would be um, business process management. As I said, we'll be doing a deep dive um, later on in the session, but the main idea is that you're familiar with workflow or maybe with business rules where you need to, where you can actually create a, a specific business process or a specific task. What we're also doing now is embedding, again, intelligent technologies um, into this offering. So we have the intelligent robotic process automation service that will help you automate a business process. We also have a new service coming up. It's called Inbox that will be your single point of entry for all your tasks. So again, role based for each end user, any task that you have from any disparate application you'll be able to see all together integrated into one, one single inbox. Um, so again, we'll go over the details later on, but that's just an overview of all the use cases offered by the platform. And at the very bottom, you can see our kind of multi-cloud foundation. Um, so as was mentioned in, in various different sessions before, SAP Cloud Platform is the abstraction layer on top of the infrastructure providers. So what we've done is we've partnered with AWS, with Azure, with Google Cloud Platform to provide an SAP Cloud Platform version on top of their, of their infrastructure. And that means that our customers can leverage both SAP Cloud Platform services and develop their applications and deploy to SAP Cloud Platform, but they can also leverage the underlying infrastructure. And of course, the benefit of using SAP Cloud Platform on top is that since it is an abstraction layer, if any requirements underneath uh, the infrastructure actually change, um, you'll be, we can make sure that your business applications and your business processes continue to run on SAP Cloud Platform because we would be covering the integration with the underlying infrastructure. And another important aspect is this, of course, gives global, um, global reach because we would be leveraging the data centers already existing for these um, other cloud service providers across the globe. So um, if we kind of talk about the integration topic, um, we would say we call it the SAP Cloud Platform Integration Suite. And that's basically a set of services and tools and APIs that can help you through your integration journey. The integration suite is just a name that we use to kind of bundle all these services together, but it's not something that you need to use all together. So you don't need to use all these services in your integration, in integration journey. You might use one or the other or a combination of a few. Um, the major components of the integration suite are, of course, the SAP Cloud integration service, which helps you with the integration um, 
SAP to SAP applications. So we have prepackaged content, um, prepackaged iFlows, and APIs that will help you integrate SAP to SAP applications. And what that means is that you don't need to do that manually. You can use our prepackaged content and do the integration automatically. Um, so that, of course, reduces the effort and reduces the time that you need to use for the integration. We also have the Open Connector service, which will give you the opportunity to um, integrate your SAP applications to third-party applications. We have over 160 um, connectors available in the Open Connector service, so, and we're continuously growing and enhancing that to give you the opportunity to um, connect even more and more third-party applications. Um, but those two aspects kind of give you the, uh, the, the best benefits for integrating both SAP and SAP to non-SAP. And then an example of how we embed intelligent technologies into the integration suite would be, for example, the integration advisor. Um, this service actually learns from past customers and past integration flows and make, gives you suggestions and recommendations on how to improve or simplify your integration process. So again, it's all about giving you the information that you need when you need it. So when you input an integration flow or you say, okay, this is the process that I want to follow, the integration advisor would then pop up and say, hey, you know, you can simplify this step or instead of doing this, you can do this. Um, and that will help you um, make your integration a little bit more efficient. And of course, we also provide APIs. Um, so in the API Business Hub, you can take advantage and actually test out all the um, specific APIs that we have either for LOBs or different industries um, or for different business processes. Um, and we also have our partner APIs there. So we do have a very large ecosystem at SAP. Our partners create solutions that are built on the platform and that run on the platform, but they also um, provide us with APIs. And those are, can be leveraged through the API Business Hub. Um, and of course, if you want to create your own APIs or manage your own APIs and kind of create a business hub or an API hub within your company, you can use the API management service to do that. Um, and that is currently, um, so it's planned to actually be available fully on Cloud Foundry beginning of next year. So you can leverage that on the Cloud Foundry environment as well. Okay, so if we move on to extensions, um, again, with extensions we do, um, we use this both internally at SAP, SAP Cloud Platform is our extension platform internally, and we recommend that our customers use it externally as well um, because it's customized and it's, and it's tailored to build extensions of SAP solutions. For example, um, if you want to extend success factors or um, C4 HANA, we now provide the SAP Cloud Platform extension factory that gives you a um, automatic connection between the extension and your, your system, so your SAP solution. Um, and we have I have a slide on this um, later, but it's basically kind of like Bluetooth connectivity in which you actually get an ID for your, your existing system. You um, configure, you get that automatically, you add it into the extension factory, and then you can connect your application to the extension. So what used to take maybe four or five, six hours or even a day can now only be done in seconds. Um, and of course, we are offering that currently for three solutions, so SAP S4 HANA, SAP C4 HANA, and SAP Success Factors, but we're planning on our Already enhancing that to cover the other the other um, solutions in the intelligence suite and also ECC and third-party um, solutions as well. So hopefully that coverage will be there by the, um, by next year. Now. In order to build extensions, so in order to actually build cloud applications, we also provide guidance and best practices in the form of two different programming models. So we have our ABAP RESTful programming model that is specific for, let's say, ABAP extensions. So you can use that programming model to transform existing ABAP assets into cloud assets. Um, and again, that's a very structured and opinionated approach in which you, you can follow the guidelines that we set out and you can transform your existing ABAP assets into cloud assets, all leveraging the ABAP environment on SAP Cloud Platform. And then maybe for, for more freestyle development or cloud native approaches, we have the cloud application programming model that you can use Node.js or Java, for example, and build your cloud um, applications and connect them to your existing systems. Um, again, the, both the ABAP and the um, CAP 
programming models are based on core data services. They're a bit different, but they're based on the same modular three-tier approach where you have your data model, your service model, and then the consumption layer, which would be the UI with um, how you actually show your application to end users. So as promised, this is a slide on, on the extension factory and explains a little bit how you can get this secured and managed connectivity from the platform to your existing SAP solution. Um, of course, as I mentioned, now we cover or we have this possibility for three um, SAP solutions, but we're planning on enhancing that in the future. Um, and the most important aspect of it is that you not only get a secured connection, but you can also manage your connections through the um, SAP Cal Platform Extension Factory. And this comes out of the box with SAP Cal Platform. It's not something that you have to license separately or consume separately. When you get a global account on SAP Cal Platform, you can start using the extension factory to manage your, your connectivity and your connections to other applications. And um, when we're talking about cloud development, when we're talking about uh, developing extensions on the platform, um, we kind of came up with a three, let's say a three group approach to how we, we think of the personas of the people that could actually think of developing something on SAP Cloud Platform. This is a very generalized approach, so not everybody might fit exactly into one of these roles, but how we see it is that we have, you know, let's say old school ABAP developers that really don't have that much experience with cloud yet, but that are getting into it and want to build a cloud application. Um, we also have the maybe SAP focused cloud developer. So they're developing on the cloud. They're not ABAP based, but they're not really cloud native and they have experience with SAP or SAP applications in the past. And then you have your full kind of freestyle developer that has no SAP experience at all um, and is not thinking about using maybe our programming models or our guidelines, but going just in a complete freestyle approach um, and building and deploying on SAP Cal Platform. The important thing to mention is that these three um, are supported, um, but we do focus on providing guidance and best practices for both the SAP Focus Cloud developer and the ABAP developer. So as mentioned before, um, if you look at the chart, you'll see that the programming models for CAP and RAP um, have kind of the same paradigm. So that means that you have a database layer, you have a service layer, and you also have a consumption layer. Um, of course, they're both based on core data services. They are a little bit different in the implementation and the framework, but the main guidelines are the same. Um, and the difference between CAP and RAP also is that with CAP, you have an open and opinionated approach. This means that we do give you guidance, we do give you best practices, we do tell you that, okay, you know, we recommend using SAP HANA as the data layer, we recommend using UI5 as the UI layer, but if you want to use something different, you're free to do so. That's also supported. Um, yeah. Um, so, and again, the important thing is that when you build using these programming models and deploy an SAP Cloud Platform, since it is the abstraction layer, we can guarantee that your applications will continue to run um, even if there are changes to the underlying infrastructure. So if we move on to digital experience, um, you guys are probably familiar with mobile services. You're probably familiar with the portal service. These are all kind of UX and digital experience solutions that we still provide and have provided in the past, um, but we're also enhancing that with this new business workplace or digital workplace solution. And that basically means that we want to provide an in this integrated um, single point of access for consumers that they will be able to um, access and complete any kind of business task or any, any kind of business process even if it has to um, interact with different SAP applications or different third-party applications. It's not just a simple kind of click on a tile and then go into the application. It's actually an integrated world. So the whole flow happens within this business workplace. Um, and that has several advantages. First of all, you're not taking you know, end users to other applications and not making them learn maybe new UIs or new interfaces when they have to do something different. But it also gives you kind of an end-to-end -end flow and you can monitor the end-to-end -end process within your business workplace. And of course, the important uh, part of this is that it will be available or you can make it available on all devices and all channels. It's not just going to be a web-based thing. You can also have it on your mobile, on your tablet to give consumers kind of flexibility and mobility so that they can get the information they need where they need it and when they need it. So now um, we can move into kind of the intelligent business process management um, use case. So again, 
workflow and business rules, probably familiar with it, you, they have been used in the past, um, but the whole idea of bringing live processes into the game, so being able to monitor your business process in real time, not having to wait to get a reporting afterward or actually mining, going through the data, combing through the data to get the analysis. You can monitor how it's doing, how the business process is working in real time, and you can see what is maybe taking longer than expected, what is maybe being faster than expected, and you can modify, so you have flexibility to modify that business process also in real time, and you can make changes efficiently and quickly. Um, and a lot of these changes don't have to be done by a developer themselves, they can actually be done by a business user or a key LOB user, somebody that's very close to the business and can understand what's missing or what's not missing. Um, we also have, for example, automation and suggestions um, and predictions within this, uh, within this intelligent business process management plane in which we can actually guide and tell you, hey, you know, this business process might need this extra step or you might be okay to remove this step to make it faster, to make it work better um, or to actually get to the goal that you want to reach. Um, and we'll see a little bit about um, all, these, all these options in the demo later by then. But I did want to talk about an example. Um, so Delivery Hero is a online food company, um, food ordering company. They actually um, had a few sessions here um, at TechEd. Um, they're one of our success stories that have been using business process management to improve their business process workflows. Um, and basically what happened is that they're a company that grew in about eight, nine years significantly. They kept acquiring different companies and different markets and different regions to continue to grow. And they realized that their capital approval process to actually um, approve these new business or development projects was taking a really long time. It was taking over 20 days. And in order to you know, live in this kind of digital dynamic world, they wanted to create a process that was faster and quicker so that their people, their teams could actually get the approval they needed to start working and to continue to grow um, as they've been done, doing for the past couple of years. So leveraging um, the SAP Cloud Platform workflow, workflow server, uh, service, leveraging business rules, um, leveraging the, the document service, they were able to automate their capital approval process in a way that it reduced the 20 days to just two days. Um, and that meant that, of course, their teams were a lot more efficient, they were a lot more productive, and they could continue to grow at a faster scale. That was all built um, on SAP Cal Platform, as you can see here. Um, and this last, this last slide is just kind of an overview of all the enablement assets and all the tools and resources that we have available. Um, so if, you, if you're just beginning your SAP Cal Platform journey and you really want to understand what use cases or what business problems can be solved with the platform and maybe see how other customers have done it in the past, you can go to sap.com and review our use cases. Um, all the use cases are customer proven scenarios um, that give you, you know, the actual business problem, the business need, and how we resolved it. Um, showing you a solution diagram so that you can get an idea of how the application or how the solution actually worked. And also giving you um, a little bit of information on which services were involved so you can get an idea of what you need to be able to do, a, maybe build a similar solution for your, for your industry. Again, all these use cases are available on sap.com so you can browse them anytime. If you want to get a little bit more guidance in actually preparing or working on a specific business project, we also have the SAP Cal Platform Discovery Center um, that includes missions that, again, are use case based, use case specific. So, for example, you can find a mission on extending SAP success factors, and it will actually show you the steps um, and all and all the process steps involved in getting to that getting to that use case, completing that use case. So, actually being able to extend SAP success factors using SAP. Cal platform. And what's cool about it is that it's actually kind of a project board style, so you can use that project board, you can edit it, you can modify it, you can request team members to be added to it, and you can actually follow your whole development project through the Discovery Center missions. And you can also get a coach assigned to each use case. So if you run into an issue or if you have questions or if you want some extra guidance from SAP, you can actually contact your coach and tell them about your issue and they will help you solve the problem. So it's really kind of going from the initial starting point of development project all the way to implementation. And then, of course, um, we also included the concept of 
cloud, um, cloud cockpit recipes, which are directly in the SAP Cloud Platform cockpit. And what you can do there is kind of an automated wizard to complete a specific use case by consuming different services on the platform. So for example, if you want to build a mobile backend, there is a, an automated wizard in the platform that you just follow through. Um, you can, you have to, of course, have to complete some fields like which sub account, which region, uh, which space you want to deploy the application in, um, which mobile services you want to add into your mobile backend, what you want to use. And then at the end, you have a mobile backend that you can continue to configure within your um, mobile services cockpit. And we also have one, for example, for the ABAP environment. Um, so you can complete a wizard to set up your ABAP, um, ABAP environment on cloud platform so that you don't have to do that manually. And of course, we have a lot of other supporting resources. For example, you have learning journeys, you have code samples, you have open SAP courses, academy videos, all available on sap.com. And we also have the estimator tool, which is very important to kind of understand how much a project will cost in the end. Um, so you can go into the estimator tool, select the services that you want to consume, select how many resources you need to complete this particular project and actually get an estimate and a budget that you can then share with your team or share with your manager or share with anybody that wants to know exactly how much um, or have an estimate of how much that project would actually cost. Okay, awesome. Um, so uh, now it's time for the demo. Um, so. I'll hand it over to my colleague, um, Venu, who will go over um, intelligent business process management and show you a, a small demo. While he's setting up, are there any questions? No? <laughs> okay. You can ask questions at the end, of course, also. Um, So I think <laughs> some of you would have already, uh, you know, heard about this demo, or you have already seen this demo in other sessions, especially in the other uh, intelligent BPM sessions, or even in the keynote. Jogan Miller also was talking about uh, how intelligent business process management uh, and concept of uh, live processes enable customers to, you know, uh, dynamically configure, deploy. Uh, uh, business process applications and also, you know, monitor them, gain intelligence from them, you know. So how overall you uh, manage your business processes. And if you take a concrete uh, business scenario, uh, hire to retail, which is one of the four uh, uh, intelligent enterprise uh, business scenarios. And if you look at the hire to retail as an end-to-end -end scenario, it consists of uh, different uh, processes where you need to manage your workforce. You do recruiting, and then you need to do onboarding, and then you need to manage the workforce, and then offboarding. So from the planning, uh, ma recruiting, onboarding, managing your workforce, and offboarding. That's the total workforce management. And if you specifically look at uh, onboarding as a module, and if you take uh, you know, uh, this as our uh, demo case today, you could see there are already uh, certain information, the tile onboarding giving you with respect to how many uh, active variants of onboarding currently in my systems and uh, how is this onboarding currently running on my systems. So if I take the role of a line of business expert from a HR point of view, I could understand how is onboarding performing today in my system. But then if I go drill down into the onboarding where I currently on the process, process flexibility cockpit, 
where I, this is like a single entry point for me as a LOB expert to manage all my process related artifacts, all the process variants. For example, you can see here the different uh, onboarding variants, whether it is a developer onboarding, an executive onboarding, a data scientist onboarding, or external uh, onboarding. So there are different variants of that onboarding process currently running on my system, together with the decisions. So if you look at every business application, whether it is a business process application or a standalone UI application, there would be always certain decision logic together with your application logic, right? So how do I separate the decision logic from the application logic so that uh, as a LOB expert or a LOB owner, I could m manage my decisions and change this adaptively without much support from the IT, right? So this is something which you could manage through SAP Cloud Platform business rules. And as an LOB expert, I would be able to manage all the decisions related to my onboarding process. And now, any process you look at, there are certain people or employees participating in this process based on their roles and functions. So it could be an approver, it could be a reviewer, or it could be a, the, the CFO of a company, or it could be you know, a manager of an organization. So how do you determine these uh, teams uh, based on their uh, various different functions and assign them as the responsible for a task which they need to perform as part of your uh, business process? So as an LOB expert, again, I need to manage the different roles and responsibilities uh, of users who take part in my business process. And now, of course, if you also want to make sure that if I am executing my business processes in different transactional systems, I also want to gain a visibility on these processes. As a process expert or a process owner or a process operator point of view, I would like to understand how is my processes are performing as of today from a SLA point of view or certain operational KPI point of view. So we have a process uh, works dashboard configurations which enable an LOB expert to configure certain key uh, performance indicators together with uh, some meaningful phases of this end-to-end -end business process. And you could also see a tile which shows extensions. This could be the possible extensions for the onboarding process, either shared by uh, SAP or provided by some of the partners. So for example, uh, visa extension. If you have an onboarding process, there could be like, you know, uh, visa processing or some validation uh, there could be different extens possible extensions for onboarding specific to certain industries. <coughs> and we also want to have a simulation capability. <coughs> Sorry. If you are making certain changes to a business process before you deploy and run, you also want to understand how it's going to impact overall my process performance. Is there any you know, uh, possible bottlenecks or issues I could expect from this? What could be the total time it could approximately take? So you need to do certain simulations. And then if you look at a, a live process style which indicates an aggregated view of this process area, like onboarding, how many onboardings are currently running on my system, and what is the current status with respect to, from a process uh, performance point of view, right? You can see there are certain critical instances, certain of them are at risk, and some of them are at on track. So that is, a, again, a high-level view uh, to me as a LOB expert specifically for a process area. And then, of course, we also want to get feedbacks from users who are participating in your business process. So for example, if you look at an end-to-end -end business process like uh, hire to retire, there are diff so many different uh, participants like a HR business partner, a hiring manager, then the employee, there could be a buddy, then there could be third party uh, users, uh, maybe there could be a, a travel desk, for example, organizing the travel for training. So there are so many different uh, users taking part in the end-to-end -end business process. They also want to share their experience, right? How you know, they experienced as part of uh, doing certain tasks in this business process. So we have a call tricks integration here which, where the sentiments of the users who are taking part in this business process is uh, brought back into the process. And this would enable the LOB expert to look for certain optimization. Think about, uh, you know, a new joinee who joined the organization but his workplace is not ready. That means from the day one, he do not have a workplace to start his work or where the trainings got delayed or maybe there is a training or a travel plan to certain locations where the visa is not ready. 
or the, the, the flight ticket is not ready. There could be different issues a new joinee could face. And at the very end, if you have a survey, the new joinee would be able to express uh, his experience, whether it could be positive or negative. This can be transferred through call tricks to our back to the business processes. And as a LOB expert, I could look for room for improvement and areas of optimizations, right? Now let us look at uh, into a details of these individual tiles. For example, we have the process variance here. We have uh, onboardings in a draft, right? I have already opened this, so I can just show you here. We can see here there are different uh, the standard uh, onboarding model here, and this is a constraint-based modeler where, as a LOB expert, it allows me to make certain modifications, like modifying certain activities or uh, rearranging certain activities or adding certain activities which is available on the left side panel here. It's not like a traditional BPMN modeler where you are as a developer modeling various activities and deploying it. This is mainly meant for an LOB expert where you have different variants of your process and then based on the constraint modeler, I am allowed to do certain modifications, right? So for example, you can see here that there is already an equipment provisioning and then you know there is a manager approving the request and the central appro procurement approval. So you can also see there are certain you know indications, certain signals. This could be the, the, the feedback coming back to the process. And then I could immediately look for certain optimization where I see like you know for this current uh, model I can it remove the central procurement approval, provided if there is a huge delay happening at the central uh, procurement office or the GPO, and uh, you could optimize that so that uh, the procurement of the workplace would happening faster, right? So I can directly go and delete this activity my, from my business process, and I could save and activate my model. That means it would be generating the underlying cloud platform workflow models and deploying this into your cloud platform today. Right? And similarly, for example, if you the onboarding has assigned and you wish to do some background check of the employee, which is not there currently in the model, right? or for example, assigning a buddy or a visa validation. So you can just drag and drop such activities, and you can see if the constraint modeler allow you to do that, it allows me to embed that activity within the business process. So there are certain rules defined as part of this uh, business process. And as an LOB expert, I am allowed to do certain changes, which I could make the change, I can save my changes, and then I could uh, activate these changes to my underlying account, right? So that's the way, as a LOB expert, you would be able to make changes. And now let us also have a look into a couple of other tiles which would be interesting for us. Like, for example, from a teams and functions point of view, if I look into what are all the possible teams and functions or the roles uh, participating in my business process, like as a HR expert, as a line manager, cost center owner, these are the possible roles you could define as part of my onboarding process. And now, who are all those users, uh, you know, participating in this? Because people or you know employees would come to the organization, they leave the organization, but the roles going to be the staying the same. So you can modify, or you can add, or you could remove. Uh, employees into these different roles, and you can manage these roles centrally so that uh, without making any changes to the underlying business process, you can manage the roles and responsibility of a process area. Right? So now let me go back and uh, show you how, as a LOB expert, I could also manage or uh, configure uh, process visibility. Right? So if you look at now, I have a process visibility workspace. If I take onboarding as my business scenario, the, it is already showing a business process model which I currently importing either from SAP Cloud Platform Workflow because we have a plug and play with the Cloud Platform Workflow and the visibility service. But at the same time, you could also import other processes either from your success factor system or from your other transactional systems like uh, ECC or Espohana or Ariba. And then you could gain process visibility. And as part of this, you can see the various different business events coming from a process area, which is already part of the scenario, together with some meaningful context data to get more uh, information out of these uh, processes. And then you could define a correlation, especially if you have two different uh, process models as part of your business scenario, one coming from success factors, another from cloud platform workflow. Similarly, if you could imagine uh, from ECC and from a, a third party system. So there are various systems participating in an end-to-end -end business process or in a scenario where you could model a correlation between them 
for in this case, use case, it could be the user ID of the new hire. If it is an order to cash scenario, it could be the order ID. If it is a procure to pay, it could be the purchase requisition ID as the correlation between different process instances. And then post that, you are defining meaningful phases. That means you are grouping set of activities as one phase, which is meaningful from a LOB perspective because it is adding certain value to the business. And you are configuring those phases based on the events which the process model is bringing into the scenario. And certain meaningful phases you are adding here by configuring those events. And of course, you could also add certain targets. If you look at any business process, there is an SLA, right? If it is a procure to pay process until you receive the, uh, the material what you ordered from your suppliers, there is a planned delivery date, or there could be a possible payment date to, based on the invoice. So that could be the due date. Or if it is an order to cash scenario, the, based on the ATP check or the availability to promise you do, there is a planned delivery date to your end customer. That could be the target SLA. So you can assign the target SLA as a dynamic value here. And then you could also keep track of them. For example, you can see I am setting up a threshold of 80 uh, percentage here. So once it exceeds the 80 percentage, it indicates that there is a performance issue. That means the status is changing from in process to risk. And then it is ex already exceeded the SLA. It is showing you as a critical instance. So as a LOB expert or a process operator, I would be able to keep track of all those uh, process instances where you see a performance issue. And then you are also defining certain process performance indicators. This is enabling you to keep track of certain key operational KPIs together with the certain analytical KPIs, like how many open onboardings currently on certain phases. Right? Or what is average a procurement time to get the workplace? Right? Or what is average time taken to you know, get the visa processing done? So these are the meaningful KPIs from a LOB perspective. You could define it. And then how do you keep track of them, all these different KPIs? Because you are modeling a scenario. You are activating them and deploying them to your system. That means naturally you would be able to get a process workspace. That is what the live process view is going to give you. So if I get into the live process view, you will be able to see the currently how many onboardings are happening in my system. And you can see all the onboardings are grouped based on their performance, based on the SLA you define, or any other critical events where 128 are happening on track. So this is what typically in every organization, 80 to 90 percentage of the cases are running fine. You don't need to worry about them. But there could be a 10 to 15 percentage which says I am critical. That means you need to focus on those 25 critical instances, and you can drill down into those 25 instances, slice and dice them, and then even go to an individual instance and understand what really going wrong. Similarly, you can see the meaningful phases from an onboarding perspective, the different phases like the first 90 days, the new hire is arriving one day before, two weeks before. That is the way you configure your phases. Together with that, the KPS, which I said, the average procurement time, and uh, for example, what, how many number of uh, uh, new hire, in, basically the new hire engagement index, and uh, onboarding delays in different departments. So these are the meaningful KPIs. And then further, you can do the drill down into the individual instances, where you can see there is a different uh, uh, instances. And then you can also slice and dice this based on different, uh, you know, uh, filters which I could apply here. For example, if I specifically taking a country, and then I can set a filter here so that I would be able to get uh, certain instances based on the filter what I have applied. Right? So this way I slice and dice my data, so I do not have any data based on France here. So let me just uh, reset it and then go back to the uh, instance view where I would be able to see sorry, all those instances currently running on my system. And then I could drill down into an individual instance where I can see it is already critical and overdue because it's exceeded the time, the target date has exceeded. I can look at the phase level view where it indicates me, okay, it is still progressing on the last phase. And what really went wrong from a process point of view, I would be getting a graphical representation of this process. Time taken between different activities you could see here, right? This really enabled you to understand what really went wrong. Then you would be able to go through the individual uh, activities and look for some you know, improvements as a LOB expert, and then you can optimize your processes accordingly. All right. So now let us look at uh, how, as a LOB expert, I would be able to get an overview of my pr 
end to end business process if i if i call it as a, a total workforce management i could go to sap api business hub where as you know sap api business hub is exposing all the apis expo exposed by the line of business applications from sap together with that there would be a new content type called live processes which enable you to see the different uh, ia scenarios like you know high to retire or, or call to order source to pay or uh, design to operate where if i drill down into high to retire i would be able to see the value flow as part of high to retire where as i said in the beginning planning the workforce the different uh, meaningful uh, phases from a lobby perspective you can see what is happening in planning workforce recruiting and onboarding managing your workforce and offboarding right together with that you could also see what are the related processes here where if i take a recruiting the new external hires i would be able to see a collaboration diagram which is uh, explaining in detail where exactly these different uh, processes are executed and at the same time you know it also indicating what are all the process steps how they are integrated right what are all the events or interfaces involved in this uh, onboarding process and then i could see there is a part of the process is executing which is onboarding in sap cloud platform i can do a drill down into this onboarding process and try to understand from a bpm and model what is currently provided as part of the onboarding right and then this is a standard process model which is uh, implemented and also shared by sap and you can look for possible extensions for this you can see what are all the possible extensions apart from the standard what sap is providing you can see equipment provisioning background check visa validation drug check travel arrangement this could be based on the various different types of onboarding as you want to do so you can select the different the onboarding extension what you are looking and once you select for example if i select equipment provisioning how do i implement this because this is a extension provided by either it could be by sap or by a partner and it's also indicating what possible steps this extension is offering of course you can make further changes to this extension and do an implementation in sap cloud platform today and uh, it enables me to import this by consuming a cloud platform recipe so the cloud platform recipe is explaining how this is implemented by using uh, sap success factors and sap cloud platform workflow so how do i consume this uh, recipe you can start the recipe you could uh, connect it to your cloud platform account so that you would be able to import this extensions to your workspace right so for example if i finalize this it enables me to open my sap web ide which is a de facto Uh, development environment in sap cloud platform where we have a integrated development environment for cloud platform workflow and which is based on bpm and 2.0 right so now if i open sap web ide i would be able to see the workflow model which is currently i have imported and as a developer i would be able to do certain implementation what is required and then the possible implementation once you do it you can deploy this workflow into the cloud platform account so if you look at now we have uh, understood the end to end business process or the scenario by going through the value flow diagram you are identifying certain modules which is onboarding understanding through the collaboration diagram what are the transactional systems involved in it looking for the possible extensions understanding the extensions and then you are doing a implementation right so from a process documentation point of view sorry process documentation to process extension and then we have the process intelligent aspect and then we are getting the business process experience from the end users right and now let us go back to uh, you know uh, as a end user perspective what what's the experience we have right so think about as a manager you are uh, uh, connecting to the portal of your company so today's world if you look at it, it's not only you are directly going and connecting to your portal there is also different channels through which you can get your information what you are looking right so of course through any mobile device you can connect to the same fury launchpad portal but these days we also having a chatbot experience you can see most of the companies are offering you chatbot experience where sap we have our conversational ai as a service today in cloud platform where we have the copilot front end enable as a manager to get 
more information and intelligent insight from certain process areas, right? So typically, you will not be going to your portal and typing this. You could also gain the same information by taking your mobile device, and you can have your chatbot. You can have certain information. You can get it through the voiceover, where you simply say, OK, how is my day? Your chatbot will be able to respond and give you certain information. So let us type and see how, how is my day here. So as a manager, I can ask this question directly through voiceover to my mobile device. And ideally, my chatbot should be able to identify what are all the priority tasks today for me. You can see there is one task currently there. And the same number you can also see in my inbox. This is the SAP My Inbox, which is the central inbox for getting your task. Together with that, it's also giving me a certain information from this, saying that there are four onboardings currently happening in your organization. And there are certain delays are all expected for an employee. That is expecting four days of a delay for approving or getting the equipment for the employee, right? And it is also proposing me an action, like show me the action, right? So it's saying show my task. It is retrieving that task and showing here. I can go to the details and uh, see what is this task or there is an employee approve, basically requesting for a leave. And at the same time, I would be able to, as a manager, I could uh, go back to my portal and I can see what are all those four onboardings currently happening. And I can drill down into my uh, onboardings currently happening. And see, you can see there are four employees currently in my onboarding list. And if I look into Alex Flowers, because my chatbot has already informed me there is a potential delay for the uh, workplace, I can see now there are certain process steps uh, provided here in a meaningful way without having all the different uh, technical steps uh, also uh, taken taking as part of this onboarding. And now you can see that, okay, this uh, request for equipment is pending and then uh, approval is pending. So the request for equipment itself is in process. That means as a manager, I need to do perform certain actions in order to progress this uh, onboarding instance to make sure that my new hire has a smooth onboarding experience, right? So. You could see here different ways you are able to get the information, even though there is a complex workflow behind the scene. As a business user or as a manager, I would be able to get a simplified view of my onboarding process. Together with that, I would be able to see the possible steps currently, what's happening to those steps, and what happened to those steps, and how many days it took, for example, you know, between those, two, those steps. And of course, then I could also go back to my chatbot, and I could uh, ask further questions. For example, if you have a new hire, you can also ask you know, uh, what equipments he require or what possible IT roles he require. Right? When a new hire is joining in your organization, you need to provide certain uh, access to certain systems through an IT ticket. Of course, I can ask those questions through my chatbot and create a ticket so that I do not need to go to different systems in my portal and create those actions for a smooth onboarding of my new hire. So with that, I think we have eight more minutes. I think that's uh, some room time for uh, questions. And uh, that's uh, almost the end of my demo. In the presentation, um, you, also have, you also have slides that kind of walk you through the rest of the learning experience that you can do through TechEd, so you can check that out later. But it basically gives you information on how you can access the replays, how you can access um, the presentations on the app and also on the website, and also how to find the latest roadmap information um, and other learning or other sessions that actually have to do or may, may relate to SAP Cal Platform and IBPM. Um, yeah, so you can check that out in the presentation later and